Welcome, everybody. Quite an impressive group. Um, ben Michael Hill is an activist, scholar, and consultant working on issues of technology and society. He is a joint PhD student at the MIT Sloan School of Management um, under Eric Von Hippel and also at the MIT Media Lab. He's also a fellow at the Berkman Center this year and is also a fellow at the MIT Center for Civic Media. Um, and he's here to talk to us today about his work. Welcome, Ben. All right. Thanks. Okay, so. Um, all right, so uh, I'll prefix this by just saying uh, a, a, a couple a couple little notes. One is that this is uh, uh, all goes well, part of my dissertation, um, and uh, also an academic paper which is sort of framed in terms of uh, the sociological literature on social movements and uh, innovation. Now I understand now even more than I did five minutes ago that this audience is much broader than that. So what I've tried to do in terms of framing this for this audience is is focusing a little bit more on the phenomena, both the phenomena. The, the 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 sociological theory. Although um, I would encourage anyone who is interested in that side to to talk to me. Um, I'm happy to circulate drafts of the paper that that kind of stuff. Um, uh, the other thing I just wanted to say is that this is unpublished work, and so uh, and I'm uh, uh, I'm interested in spreading this to the world. That's why I'm here talking. But if you want to cite or quote it, um, I'd appreciate if you ask me, uh, mostly so I can make sure you get an up to date copy of uh, whatever it is that I'm working on that reflects the newest ideas. Um, uh, and then the final thing is, is that I've, uh, uh, this is qualitative work you'll see, um, and involves a lot of, uh, sort of, uh, presenting my data, my some quotes from people. Um, I've, uh, I have permission from everyone so far to show their, show their names, but I think for the interest of, uh, uh, uh for a series of reasons, I'm hiding the, the specific names, but, but revealing the names of the projects, so, um, just so you don't get surprised. All right. So I'm framing this, uh, uh, this, this work broadly. I'll tell you a little bit about my sort of broader research in, is, is research into sort of peer production, um, uh, which is this sort of this is large and growing interest in sort of online volunteer driven projects, um, uh, free and open source software. Um, that's actually where I come from as a community. I'm a, I've been a developer in a bunch of uh, free software projects for a long time before I decided I wanted to become a, a, a an academic sociologist. Uh, um, uh, also, a lot of work in remixing. I've done a little bit of that work in remixing communities. And then, of course, there's been lots and lots of research in uh, Wikipedia. And I could say wikis more generally, but actually almost all of this work has been in, in uh, on Wikipedia per se. Um, I mean, the, the original pure production article actually used Wikipedia back when it was, before it was, uh, you, get, you guessed right, uh, if I guessed right on that. And there was a little project with 10,000 people or something, uh, 10,000 articles, right? Uh, and said, wow, you know, maybe this will turn out to be something kind of big. Uh, and as it turned out, uh, it did. Um, now, this research has really focused on, uh, uh, um, uh, has, has, been, has been driven by an interest in the collaborative potential of uh, this type of organization. Of, uh, and, and, uh, um, and basically, the benefits that this sort of inexpensive, large-scale collaboration can bring. Um, uh, uh, the the um, people have looked at projects like the Ap Apache web server or the Linux kernel or Wikipedia and said, wow, look at all that great collaborative um, work that can be possible. Of course, the vast majority of this work has focused on the projects that did become large, successful collaborations, right? Um, uh, uh, because those were the ones that were visible and those were the ones that were impressive. Um, nowhere has this been more clear than in the context of Wikipedia. Um, this is uh, just uh, the number of uh, academic articles with, with Wikipedia in the title over time. And uh, uh, what you can see is there's now more than 3,500 like peer-reviewed academic papers which have been published about Wikipedia. Um, uh, just like an enormous amount of scholarly interest. There are actually two conferences, um, one academic, one not academic, which are dedicated to people presenting studies of Wikipedia. There's uh, uh, one of which just happened last week. I was unfortunately couldn't go to it. Um, uh, uh, but uh, maybe some other people here um, were able to. So there's been an enormous sort of um, academic interest in, in Wikipedia per se. Um, um, and 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 I think that it's worth sort of unpacking exactly uh, uh, what this sort of what Raymond's model is here when we look at these sort of collaborative projects like Wikipedia. And the idea, um, and this is this is sort of taken from um, uh, uh, my description of what what uh, the 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 model behind sort of the, the interest in these sort of large collaboration comes from. It's this idea which was described most famously in the context of free and open source software, open <coughs> source um, uh, 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 in particular by. Um, Eric Raymond, but also sort of picked up by a lot of academics who've suggested this is actually a, a, a model which, which uh, uh, businesses, for example, can benefit from. And the model works something like this. 
you publish your, your work op uh, um, openly, release it under a, li under a license that's uh, a free software license or an open source license. Um, that, 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 uh, uh, in, in, uh, Eric, in Eric Raymond's model, um, the, the, with enough eyes, all bugs become shallow. Basically, the community comes in, they see the bugs in your software, or they see the, 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 the missing information in your encyclopedia. They begin to fix it or improve it over time. And then you end up with this stuff which is uh, of higher quality. The reason that the Apache web server is better according to this model is because it's open and the community has come in and really been able to uh, help improve it. The fact that there are so many people, because it's open, there are so many people contributing to it, finding those bugs and fixing those bugs. Um, uh, and, and, and the result is stuff which, be, which can outcompete uh, the proprietary alternatives. But I want to suggest that uh, there's a, a, a less studied sort of part of here, which is that there's this missing piece of the model, which is the attracting contributors. Um, that, 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 that in most of these projects, and this is, this is, this is uh, right now I'm still talking in terms of my broader sort of research, but there's this, th this, this many people who've tried this have realized that actually this is a little more difficult uh, um, uh, than, than it sometimes looks. I don't know, has anyone here tried to start a, a, a free or open source software project? Has anyone tried to create a, 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 a wiki, for example? Um, a public wiki, not just one for themselves, but, uh, 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 but, but one that was designed for a community to get involved in, right? Um, uh, did it, uh, uh, did it, did it, did, 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 does the original, does this model of, you know, uh, community improves higher quality, like, result in, you know, really make sense to you? Did it, was it your experience? Sometimes, a little bit. So I've been doing this for a long time, and this wasn't my experience. Um, um, what do people think the, the, I mean, I like to ask this question, but, but in free and open source software projects, what do people think the median number of contributors are to a free and open source software project? By looking at, and, and, I, and I have data from about a dozen different uh, websites that host free software projects or open source software projects. Um, median number of contributors, any guesses? One source code fix? One uh, we, yes, we can do one, uh, uh, one source code fix, sure. One? Three. What? Seven. Uh, one. One. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Uh, Three. All right. So here's the the uh, the median is one. Um, uh, this is this is from SourceForge. If I look at if I, if I limit it to only to only projects which have been downloaded a hundred times, it looks uh, the, the median is two. Um, if I look at it, if to projects which have um, been released um, uh, uh, several times, which have been um, had a series of uh, contributions to them, um, the median uh, is is still one. It's very hard to 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 fight this. If you look at if I look for data, I don't. I'm not going to show you all these, but but um, if you look at data from Google Code, if we look at data from 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 all different places, it's very very hard to 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 fight this this sort of power law function here, right? The vast majority of attempts at creating free and open source software projects never become collaborative at all. Um, um, uh, we can look at, here's from a very different place. This is Scratch. Uh, this is the, uh, it's a remixing community. Scratch is a reference to the, like, uh, like, like hip hop scratching. And the idea is community for remixing. The vast majority of projects um, are contributed to by uh, exactly one person, or are never remixed. Um, uh, you look at, you know, this, th I've, I've looked at, at dozens of communities of people attempting to create these sorts of projects, and this is like a, it's a law of nature. Um, uh, uh, it, 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 it's everywhere. And it's very hard to make it go away by, um, uh, by, by trying to um, reframe this. Yes? There's alternative explanations, which is that the people who participate in these communities are, don't actually care about the remix angle, and only academics or other community extremists or something actually care about the remixing. So it's as if the, product, if the producers aren't excited about that. And maybe their use of the service is different from what you're looking so for. So it's certainly true that if you talk to, it, when you ask uh, participants in uh, these communities, you say, are you really upset that you don't have contributors to their sites? The, 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 the result from the interviews, or at least the write-ups that I've seen, has basically suggested that people are basically OK with the fact uh, uh, that there aren't other people contributing. They're not like incredibly upset about this fact. But, 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 but were they, um, but many cases, especially after the first project, they sort of expected people to, uh, uh, expected it to be more successful and would have been happier had people showed up. So I think that that's, okay. I think that that's, um, that's my reading of the, some of the, the, some of the, the work in that area. I mean, that's a question that people have asked. Um, and one of the things you do is you say is people have talked a lot about like what success should mean 
in, uh, in a free and open source software project, right? Are these projects unsuccessful? And I think that if you ask the people who are creating the projects what successful means, they don't actually need. They'll say, I, I'm willing to consider this project successful even though, even though I didn't get anyone contributing to it because I released it a few times, it solved my problem, whatever. Um, so I think that that's, that's fair. Um, um, uh, to say that, th that this isn't necessarily like a critical problem for free and open source software or for wikis, um, but I think that it is a critical problem for a theory that, 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 um, that, that suggests, that, that, that doesn't look at this missing step um, in the sense that it assumes that it will work out when actually it almost never does. Um, the are seen in science studies, you look at the frequency of citations right. of papers. That's right. Most papers have been cited That's right. you know, zero times. Actually. That's right. I've seen those before. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, research has shown that only a small portion of, uh, of these pure production projects attract any participants. This has been shown um, in a, in a, by a bunch of different people in free and open source software. It's sort of a, a, a well-known thing, at least uh, among a subset of academics who care about this. It's been shown in remix, um, remixing communities, and it's been shown in, um, it shown in wikis as well um, by taking big wiki hosting sites, and you look, and actually most wikis that are attempted to be sort of big collaborative projects never really take off. Um, so that's my research question for this study, but not just for this study. It's actually also my research question for that. That's the research question that my dissertation is trying to deal with, sort of explained in a very phenomena, phenomenal, like phenomena focused way. Why do some peer production projects successfully attract contributors while most don't? Um, um, and I, I want to point out a few things that I'm that I'm doing here. Um, one is that I'm taking project as the unit of analysis, which is something that um, uh, historically a lot of the academic literature studying this has not done. They've actually focused on the individuals. You've looked at, you've gone to the Apache project, the Linux kernel, and you've interviewed lots of people, and you say which ones are contributing more or less, and how does their the way that they're motivated, the, the 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 ways in which they say they're motivated based on some survey sort of result in that. That's like a an example of the type of work that are here. The second is that I'm focusing on mobilization. That is that that, that my dependent variable, if you want to think of it here, is actually the, the it, it is the getting lots of people to contribute, right? Now, those people might be contributing. Um, in this sense, we might think of a community like uh, uh, 4chan, who's producing things that many people in the world think are maybe not of value to the world. If you don't know what 4chan is, don't look it up. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, but but uh, there are a bunch of communities that, are, that have successfully mobilized people, but who maybe aren't creating things that everyone agrees are of high value, um, uh, even though they're very productive. Um, um, so what I'm looking at here is mobilization. I'm not, actually, I'm not actually talking about quality. I'm talking about lots of people coming in. And so I'm sort of, in some ways, buying into that, um, or at least assuming the second half of that, uh, that, that, that Raymond model, that, that, that if we get lots of contributions, we will result in, 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 in higher quality. At least I'm, I'm at least suggesting that that might be the case. Um, and the third thing I'm looking for is contributions towards a project's goal, in the sense that um, you'll see in my data this is actually a pretty important thing, that there are some projects who can get lots of people to join. You can get lots of people to sign up, but no one actually does anything, right? Um, no, one, no one really contributes, and maybe you've had that experience as well. Um, and so for me, uh, 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 attracting contributors means that you can't just attract them. They also have to become contributors. Um, Right, um, and then as I've already mentioned, some of the a lot of the literature so, fo so far is focused on individual motivations. So, for example, decreased transaction costs. I'm going to come back and talk about that, and um, and uh, reputation. So, um, to look at this today, as you know from my title and abstract, people saw it. I'm looking at sort of failed Wikipedia. So, so we can think of this as um, if you if you're interested in a, uh, the the problem with looking only at the successful projects, uh, it's sometimes called sort of selecting on the dependent variable. Because if we care about mobilization, if we only look at the projects who successfully mobilized, we actually have trouble understanding why it is that, that those ones were able to succeed, right? Because we're only looking at the success cases, right? So, 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 so. My research is, in general, based on taking big populations of attempts at these sorts of projects, right, pure production projects, and looking at why some of them get traction and attract contributors, why some of them mobilize, while other ones don't. Um, and uh, luckily for me, um, Wikipedia is not only the, the, the Wikipedia being this sort of poster child of peer production um, uh, from the very beginning and now the subject of this enormous amount of academic research, it turns out there were, um, it would be great, right, if we had look at all the failed Wikipedias. Well, luckily for me and maybe for all of us, there were a bunch of failed Wikipedias, um, at least sort of like uh, failed Wikipedias that happened before Wikipedia, uh, before Wikipedia was launched. There have been some that have been launched afterwards. Um, I haven't included them in this write-up, though I've done some interviews of some ones afterwards, and we can talk about that uh, later if there's time. 
Now, all of these projects, um, now what does it mean for something to be a failed Wikipedia, right? I'm making a claim that it's similar to Wikipedia. Um, um, all projects were self-identified as encyclopedias, or if they didn't call themselves encyclopedias, and that's kind of important, they were referred to as encyclopedias in the press, um, in the sense that uh, uh, people were writing them up and said there's this new encyclopedia project. I'm very interested to hear that in 2000, there was actually an article in USA Today about online encyclopedia projects, which didn't mention Wikipedia, because of course it didn't exist yet. Um, uh, it was about three other projects, which probably no one had heard about, um, uh, uh, in this room had heard about. Um, I also asked each of the uh, founders of each of these projects um, if they basically like uh, uh, had described their project, uh, like, like, you think yourself, your project is a Wikipedia, as an encyclopedia? They all basically confirmed that. Um, in all cases, the, co the content of the encyclopedia was crowdsourced from volunteers. They didn't pay people to, to do work on this. I have one project which I've not included in here, which was uh, an online encyclopedia project which was um, paying people in advertising revenue um, or a portion of advertising revenue for that. Um, I've not included that in order to keep this sort of um, crisp, although including it I think would keep my results basically unchanged. I think it's a little bit different. Um, uh, and then the sample includes the full population of projects that were publicly announced, to my knowledge. If you know of other projects, I would love to hear of them. I'd like this to be comprehensive. I think so far it is. Um, but if you know of more, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Um, this is my research setting. These are, the, these are the eight projects that I've included here. I can walk through, walk through this a little bit. So the first project, these are um, sorted up, so sorted in terms of time from when they were founded. The first project was founded in the early 90s, before the web, um, um, called the Interpedia. Um, uh, uh, from, from, from our records, it looks like there were about 400 people that participated, but um, they only produced a small number of articles. Um, the second project was the Distributed Encyclopedia, which was a project which was uh, kind of a cool idea. Um, it was certainly, it was a web project, but it was, it was the idea was is that you would create encyclopedia articles on your own web page. And then uh, you would uh, uh, email someone, and then they would sort of add it to the list of articles. And if you wanted to modify someone else's article, you could take it and modify it, and then they would link to both. And there would be some sort of people could create competing indexes. And the idea was that it would sort of work on this way. Again, a little bit different, a little bit earlier um, um, as well. Uh, uh, as far as I can tell, they, they, they never got anyone else to start writing articles. Um, um, but I did get a bunch of people who were interested in it. Um, this is one that I've had trouble getting a lot of good data from. I've talked to the founder, but just, um, uh, but, 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 but I, this is the thinnest, the thinnest data on this one. The second project was, was, the, was everything, the everything was a, uh, was, was a project. It's also called Everything 2. This is one that some people um, may have heard of. It's actually still around today. Um, um, uh, it's a project which uh, ended up uh, getting 50,000 contributors and building more than half a million articles. Uh, um, so been, been been pretty successful. Um, um, although it sort of it, it, it saw itself as uh, it didn't want to constrain itself to traditional sort of definitions of encyclopedia, and we'll come back and talk about uh, about that. But 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 it saw itself as sort of uh, really being a database for everything. Um, but early on, especially, so everything it's interesting. A few of these projects that exist today, they sort of identified their marginal utility when Wikipedia was released. So everything today is much more focused on like creative writing. And part of that is because uh, after, in a world where Wikipedia is, is so big, um, they, they sort of uh, decided, OK, well, Wikipedia is already doing this thing that we, were, we, we thought we were doing originally. Maybe we should sort of retrench. And so that's changed with time. But, 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 but early on, looking at some of the archives, it seems like uh, calling an encyclopedia project is pretty valid. Yeah? When you call it a failure, uh, it sort of stands out in that list. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Um, we'll talk about this as well. So, okay. so there's, there's, there, the, the, not everything is equally a failure in okay. this mode, and everything, and everything is by far the most successful project um, um, in this list that's not Wikipedia. Um, uh, 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 H2G2 is a project which was the uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It was created by, uh, it was created uh, by uh, basically by Douglas Adams, the author of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> not him personally, but sort of a company that he was somehow the the, the inspiration for. Um, uh, it is currently being uh, uh, maintained by the BBC, um, although uh, the BBC, it was on the list of things that the BBC is going to cut due to budget cuts in the, uh, in the British government, so I think that there are some people in the community thinking about what they're going to do with it. But um, it, was an it was supposed to be the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Earth Edition. So the idea was it was an encyclopedia about Earth, but written in the style of the Hitchhiker's Guide. Um, uh, the Info Network was a small uh, was was a, a small project uh, created in 2000. One of the ones that was written 
um, uh, uh, written up here. It was, in many ways, the project which was most like Wikipedia. When I look at the early versions of that site, like I, I, if you, it looks more like Wikipedia does today than Wikipedia did early on. Um, uh, a very sort of similar type of project, although again, a little bit broader in the way that they thought of uh, what should be included in the info. Um, uh, we have maybe one contributor to the info here. Maybe, no? OK. Uh, um, uh, uh, GNUpedia was a project which, uh, uh, so Newpedia is one people have probably heard of. It was the project created by uh, the, the founders of Wikipedia, um, uh, but was more of a user's more traditional sort of wiki, uh, uh, encyclopedia authorship model. Um, got 2,000 participants uh, involved, uh, but again, only 24 articles. Um, uh, uh, GNUpedia was a project uh, which was uh, created by some people from the free software community. Um, uh, and uh, similar sort of idea, more traditional sort of encyclopedia authorship model. Um, and then, of course, Wikipedia is the project that everyone knows. Yeah? So you've used participants and contributors. Um, I'm assuming you, you, there's a difference. Um, uh, or is that uh, so, are they interchangeable? So they're interchangeable. That's right. Okay. Um, uh, that's right. Yeah. So this is a complete list of all the Wikipedia projects. Is this the ones you're focusing on? This is a complete list of all the ones that I know about that existed before 2001. Do you know of one that I don't? Um, so were created before Wikipedia. Okay. Since Wikipedia was founded, there have been a bunch of people who've decided that uh, they could, they want to do better or different than Wikipedia, and have created projects subsequently. Um, uh, but uh, I'm looking at all the projects that existed before because this is a sense in which in which um, uh, it's not clear that any one of these is necessarily going to be a, uh, a success. Now, now, one thing that I'm doing right now is I'm actually expanding this a little bit in the sense that I'm going to probably go forward one year, and I'm looking at a few projects which are founded in the year after Wikipedia, but before Wikipedia was clearly a success. There's a sense in which Wikipedia was smaller than everything, for example, for, for much of the first year. Um, and so I think it's a little bit, um, some criticism I've got when I presented this uh, uh, a month or so ago, or a couple months ago, was that, that, uh, that I should really be looking, looking at these, pro b b I should be, my cutoff should not be when Wikipedia was founded, it should be when Wikipedia was, like, clearly the project that you wanted to contribute to if you wanted to work on an encyclopedia. I think that that's a valid criticism. If you know of, I've got a list of those projects, but I'm interested in hearing those as well, but maybe afterwards. Yeah. I'll ask more about it later, but I'm just curious about so you're delimiting it to just projects that are aiming to be a universal encyclopedia. That's right. General purpose so encyclopedias. Many, you know, fan, That's every, right. every fan culture has its pedia. That's right. Uh, Although most of those, the ones that are called pedia, are mostly came after Wikipedia. Came later. That's right. But there may there was there were similar projects at that. I've also limited well, to only ones that are in yeah. English. Um, uh, there were there was one in German that existed before, which I'm not included in here. Um, uh, mostly because I don't speak German, so it's hard for me to look at the uh, the archives. Um, but uh, th th that's right. I should be clear about what this is referring to. Okay. Um, this is to give you an idea of the timing of projects. This is one argument is that well, maybe these projects just came to they were just ahead of their time, right? And I think that that you could maybe make that argument. It's pretty easy to make that argument for Interpedia, which really did seem to be, uh, uh, if not ahead of its time, ahead of Wikipedia's time. Um, uh, before the web, uh, maybe that's part of the story. Um, it's interesting. I've asked the founders of the projects, and they don't think so. Um, uh, 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 similar with uh, that, you might be able to make that argument with the uh, distributed encyclopedia project as well, which is that all the rest of them um, continued going and were active uh, uh, before, uh, you know, before and after Wikipedia. So actually, most of these projects, and if you think about it, it's sort of this is the era when the web is sort of exploding. Lots of people are making these websites. Um, most of these projects came came around at about the same time. Um, now, in terms of my data, um, uh, uh, this is, uh, I used, uh, the data, most of the data here is, is sort of semi-structured interviews in the sense that I had a bunch of open-ended questions. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to ask. Yeah. Um, when, uh, oh. oh, no. Uh, go um, ahead. So, so, Wikipedia was clearly the product you'd want to contribute to starting around maybe mid-2002. Um, right. So I wonder if all these products would have survived and happily lived on if it weren't for Wikipedia eating their market. That's possible. That's a, that's a... We'll never know. It's an interesting question, yeah. Uh, but that could be the real killing factor. It's not too soon. It's just too much Wikipedia. Right. Uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, so my data here is, is, is mostly consists of interviews of founders of each of these projects. I've sort of tracked down the founders of each of these projects. Um, uh, I did one in-person interview. The rest have been on, um, on the phone. I did one over email. Um, uh, a number of these projects had more than one founder, so I've included those more than once. I've also put together as much archival data as I can, so a lot of time in the Wayback Machine 
uh, grabbing as many of these pages so I can actually see the process. I've managed to get Usenet data, um, uh, uh, so, so <laughs> conversations. So, um, and also, uh, I've gotten the people's personal email in some cases. They've managed, people who've kept it, they've been able to give me their personal email so I can look through that. Um, and then also sort of discussions about the projects, um, which adds up to about 3,000 pages of data. I've also got newspaper and media coverage of all the projects, I think comprehensive. Um, and then what's interesting is that for four of the eight projects, I actually have pre-launch planning and discussions. Um, so I can actually, uh, um, um, and, and what, I'll, what, I, what I do here is I actually sort of cross-reference these. So in a couple cases, people have said things, told me things in interviews that I went back and looked in the data and I found so I find more and less support, and so what I do um, um, for some of the some of people's recollections. I mean, this is of course uh, ten years later um, in most cases. So I've tried to get as much data as I can um, from di of different types, so I can sort of piece it together and try to figure out what really what really went on. Um, uh, the methods is sort of a multiple case study analysis um, using sort of iterative stepwise coding, which basically means that I um, uh, recorded uh, each of the interviews and then had all this sort of archival data. I transcribed all of that, um, all those interviews uh, for my sins, and then um, I basically went through and coded it. You can think of it as sort of tagging that data. Um, I went through and I tagged it in in a sort of uh, uh, sort of a, in, in in inductive way in the sense that I looked for themes which are emergent in the text, and then in a de in in it was deductive codes as well. So I looked for in the sort of academic literature on this topic and coded it as well. Um, I used some piece of free software called RQDA to do that. Um, I then categorized the codes, I grouped them, uh, and then I used the themes uh, to 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 create a set of hypotheses and propositions. Now um, I will say one thing, which is that that uh, this is the only piece of this is the only qualitative project that I'm working on. Um, um, I'm primarily a quantitative person. I'm presenting this here in part because uh, I think it's hopefully of interest to people, but also because I think that uh, uh, it's a little bit uh, uh, it's easier to understand because the data is text and quotes and interviews and stuff like that. That said, um, I'll say um, one limitation of this type of work. Um, is that I can't test these hypotheses, right? I can I can create a set of uh, um, a set of propositions or a set of sort of um, uh, uh, suggestions for, for for why I think these projects work, but but I can't I can't test them in a in a scientific sense, right? Um, uh, uh, that's just a limitation of these methods. Um, so I can um, that said, I can test them in other data sets, and we'll talk about how I plan on testing some of these uh, 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 hypotheses in the other parts of my dissertation. So anyway, I had four key themes, which uh, emerged from uh, or, or propositions, which emerge from coding. Um, um, I'll go through these quickly, and then I'll talk about each of them in depth and provide some sort of background for this. The first was that Wikipedia attracted contributors because it was built around a familiar product. Um, uh, it was built around a, something like a, an encyclopedia, uh, something that people were familiar with. The second is that they attracted contributors because it was focused on substantive content develop development instead of technology. And that goes, I think, again, is a little bit of a, goes, uh, uh, goes against uh, some of the, the common ways of thinking about Wikipedia. The third was that it attracted contributors because it offered low transaction cost of participation, which is something which uh, is actually uh, pointed to by, by uh, Yochai's work and by a number of other people. And the fourth was that Wikipedia attracted contributors because it de-emphasized attribution and social ownership of the content. So I'll talk, I'll, I'll, you know, this is the rest of my talk, so I'll talk plenty about these. And of course, I can't speak causally, um, and I can't test these <coughs> hypotheses using these data and these methods. So. Um, the, first, uh, uh, the first proposition, that Wikipedia's um, familiar product was a key to its success. Um, here's a quote from uh, the founder, uh, one of the one of the members of the founder te founding team of Everything Two. I've interviewed a few people from that project. He said, "I don't think we ever used the term encyclopedia, and that probably would have been smart. Wikipedia had a much more focused purpose than Everything Two. Everything Two was sort of by its nature, sort of Zen Zen koan like. Everything, everyone who's involved with it thought it completely defied description, and that I think was ultimately to its detriment. Versus Wikipedia, which was like." We're going to be like an encyclopedia, like the World Book Encyclopedia, but huge and comprehensive. We're going to keep this impartial tone, and everything has to be referenced, and that sort of thing. Um, right. So the idea here is, is that Wikipedia attracts contributors because its product or goal was familiar to the potential contributors. And failed projects, um, the failed projects um, uh, tended to deviate from this model. Um, um, now, now, Joseph Riegel, who was, uh, uh, I don't know, is he still involved in the center? He was certainly a, a, a fellow uh, last year, um, wrote a wonderful book on, on Wikipedia, and one of the things he does in his second chapter is really sort of put Wikipedia into, the, into, into context. He says that Wikipedia, it's, people, there's a hesitation, to, there's a sense in which people say Wikipedia is this radically new type of you know, product, and he says actually Wikipedia is, is, is very much in this long series of uh, what he calls I think, the encyclopedic impulse or something like that, um, and that and that the the and that Wikipedia really has uh, uh, is best seen in this series of you know going back to Diderot, people producing very similar types of encyclopedias, and I think that you can think about this in terms of 
there's a literature in sociology on frames, um, in, which basically suggests that, that we have like kind of templates in our mind which we can bring to bear on a situation. Um, and there's been a whole bunch of work in different parts of sociology um, uh, which have suggested that these that, that 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 common frames can help sort of certainly making understand things easier, but also can can uh, lay the groundwork for. For, for different, for, for potentially for, for mobilization, right? For, for, for contributing. So you can think about this in terms of, I mean, I, I think that if, you, if you've contributed to Wikipedia, you understand that there are really thousands and thousands of pages of guidelines and rules. But, but if you basically have ever, if you know what an encyclopedia is, you don't really need to read almost any of them. That, that, that for example, we keep, one, of the, one of the, a key rule in Wikipedia is around notability, right? Like what articles will get in, what articles won't. And they have to be notable. Now, if you basically know the type of things that are in, World Book or Britannica, you basically, you understand enough about notability to wing it, at least for a while. Um, if you understand, um, if you understand what, uh, uh, how encyclopedias are written, you basically understand neutral point of view, in the sense to just write like Britannica, and you'll get, and, and, you'll, and you'll be pretty close. Now, um, the failed attempts often expanded or sort of al altered this um, encyclopedic frame. So Everything 2, for example, was described on its own website as a flexible web database created by Block Stackers Incorporated, the name of the company, the, the, the company which started it, which seeks to find the best way to store and link ideas. The result, it's absolutely crazy. And they have this colon, this colon thing is absolutely true. You read the article about what is everything to, and it's and they will they will bend over backwards to not tell you what everything to is because they didn't want to they didn't want to constrain everything to, um, because you know, right? Um, the info the info network. His founder said, I don't think I I conceived of it as let's put an encyclopedia online. I think I probably thought. Like, this is going to be an exploration where we're going to figure out what a reference work online looks like. It's this idea that in the context of the internet, why should we be constrained by these previous models of production when we could build on this and create things which, which um, are, are more? Um, in the sense that the world book, for example, their, their ideas of notability are at some level constrained by the fact that they're only going to print you know, they're gonna. You know, the books. They're only gonna be this many books, which, although it's a lot of books, is 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 only a, a subset of the topic. Somebody's not gonna get written about. And the concept of notability plays a very uh, uh, important role in deciding what does and doesn't get an article. Um, Contributors struggled um, with goals that diverged even slightly from this tradition. So H2G2, again, this is the project which was like the Hitchhiker's Guide, right? Um, uh, it was very, very similar um, uh, to it was the, the Earth Edition, but it was supposed to be with a different tone. And, and, and the fact that it deviated made it very hard for people to contribute. So this is a quote from one of their founding team members. He said that one of the problems um, was firstly that people would be writing completely fictional stuff about the universe, you know, about the Hitchhiker's universe. And we'd go, no, 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 you're not getting it. This is for real people. This is about the real world. Then what they did at the same time was that they'd also do stuff about the real world, but they'd try to write it from the point of view of an intergalactic guide. So we get articles about soccer that would start with, on planet Earth, which is the third planet out from the solar system Sol, the humans like to play blah, 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 blah. Shut up, all right? It's like this is going to be read by humans who live on Earth. We had piles and piles of this shit, and we had to shovel our way out from under it, right? Um, so this is the, the idea is that even though they diverged a little bit, it actually prevent it, it created barriers to sort of collective action um, in the sense that it, in in the sense that if we think of an important part of mobilization as sort of getting people on the same page, um, this can provide a sort of uh, uh, an important sort of uh, barrier to this. Now I'll say one thing that if you look at a lot of the six, the most successful um, free and open source software projects, almost um, uh, uh, and this is just a, this is not a scientific observation, this is just my, my sort of idea, that if you look at the, most of them, almost all of them are reproducing, uh, um, or many of them are reproducing applications that we're, that we're actually pretty familiar with. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, your, your, your photo application is actually quite a lot like some of the existing photo applications. So. Mm -hmm. but also, if you go back to that for a second though, I mean, you can also flip away, flip around the way that you're framing that so that part of what happened here is that the project controllers were telling the users you're doing it wrong. And if they had encouraged this type of writing, they might have actually, you know, continued to grow and gather a really large community of people who wanted to write stuff in that type of frame. And so, so, I mean, that's so, possible. so, so everything too is much more of an example of that, in the sense that everything too really didn't tell people to do or not to do <coughs> um, particular things. They really said we're, we're we're for everything. Over time, they sort of uh, they, I mean, they 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 rein they positive reinforcement on things that they sort of appreciated. But 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 um, uh, I think that uh, I think that that. That's a that's a good point, um, uh, uh, but I think there are some other examples of projects that did that that also struggled in the long term to get the kind of traction that Wikipedia did. Yeah. Do you think um, like salvageability plays a role here? Like in everything, do everything salvageable? Because you just publish it, and Wikipedia, like most things, are publishable because you can turn them into being in the objective zone. But the 
just like these are completely unsalvageable because you can't just make minor amendments to them. That's a good. That's a good. That's a nice suggestion. <coughs> um, all right, I'm, I'll go back and watch the recording. Someone watching the live yes. stream asked if you could repeat uh, the question. Okay, uh, that question was, do we think salvageability of the content in the sense that uh, if you know th th this sentence that's quoted here is is unsalvageable? Um, but in everything too, people might be able to improve it or work it into something else. And I think that that's a good suggestion. That's something I can look at. I mean, I, I'll be going back through this data. So uh, suggestions of things I should look out for is something that's uh, are, are useful. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think another piece of it is that if you say you can publish everything here, you're competing with the web as a whole mm -hmm. because the web exists and you can publish everything there and you have a big audience. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of it is of that framing is that <coughs> the contribution of a project is to be a constraining factor because you actually have a completely <coughs> open, unconstrained right. publishing platform that is going to that might give you more publicity than something like everything too. Yeah. So the idea is that if you do everything, uh, you're sort of comp aren't you competing with the web? And I think that uh, I mean, it's interesting. People, people talked about that. Yeah. Um, uh, Interpedia, for example, which kind of came about before the, the before the web, thought that I mean they, they said things like we thought we might be able to be the internet, um, which was kind of an interesting uh, concept. Uh, but yeah. I wanted to ask about that product since it was before the web. Were they were they based on Gopher or some other technology? Uh, they, had, they had they had they had they 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 built a series of different interfaces too. It was a very sort of technologically focused project, and I'll yeah. talk about that. Um, okay. But yes, they were based they were based on <coughs> downloadable things on FTP. They were based on Gopher, and they also in towards the end had a built a web client as the web was sort of coming about. Uh, right. So my second hypothesis is that Wikipedia's sort of substantive focus on content and not on technologies. Um, uh, was important because it's, because it left its founders uh, its founders were, were focused on evangelizing and attracting content creators. The field projects often focused on building the technological capacity to support these these contributions. Um, uh, so in con in contrast to a lot of these uh, in contrast to a lot of these these arguments that suggested that that Wikipedia uh, that, that, that that peer production projects succeed because the 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 you know that you know it's just like new technology makes it possible that actually uh, uh, the, the the strong focus on technology and making things easier seem to distract from the the, the real goal of getting people to contribute. Um, all of the projects except Wikipedia and Newpedia, which were founded by the same team, were founded by technologists, which in the early days of the web is not uh, too surprising. Um, all all of the projects. All of the projects, including Newpedia, other than Wikipedia, um, wrote their own software. Wikipedia was the only the only project which did not write custom software um, um, in the entire in the entire sample. They just used a wiki software, which was somewhere on the web. Um, many of the projects were very focused on I mean, what, I, what I'm willing to suggest are sort of technical minutia or redundant systems. Um, the founder of the Info mentioned his super, the superior quality of his URLs four times in a one-hour interview. Um, and he's right. He's right. Wikipedia URLs are really long and ugly. His URLs were much, much better, but I don't think that that uh, was the was the deciding factor. Um, um, uh, uh, GNU, the, the GNE, which was originally GNUpedia, that project had three competing technological uh, implementations, 200 participants, and they never they never got farther than producing test test content. They had huge numbers of people working together to build infrastructure, and no one actually contributing to to the uh, to the article. Interpedia had four software development projects, including the Gopher version, um, 400 participants, and again, very little content. <coughs> um, so here's a quote from uh, uh, a founder of the Info who said, who described his role in the project. I had this notion that my job was to provide the pl platform, like my job was writing the code and not the content. That was the community's job. But since there was no community, it just didn't happen. And so I feel like I kept trying to refine the user interface and things, like make it more inviting so more people would write stuff. But I didn't realize that to really get started, I just had to, there's only so much you can do by, um, uh, by making the interface easier to use. You just have to get writers or write stuff yourself. Um, one of the founders of GNE uh, uh, described the necessary resources in technical terms, and I said, "What was necessary to produce the encyclopedia, um, or into your project?" And he says, "Well, um, in the way we were developing the prototype, we started to look at what kind of server capacity, for example, we'd need, how much content we'd need, how much space, how much room, bandwidth, all that kind of stuff, and loads of other technical challenges." Um, Wikipedia was, and still is, according to some of these, to, to, to a lot of the people that I've interviewed, seen as sort of technically unsophisticated. Um, uh, a founder of Wikipedia said, a lot of the stuff in Wikipedia is extremely obvious and not very sophisticated. I mean, the Wikipedia is not high tech. I always imagine something high tech. That's my nature. I envision things that are at a higher technical level. We envision for the Wikipedia as something that would be high tech. And you could see the Wikipedia inspiring Wikipedia, but not the other way around. I, I mean, the question that I asked here was something like, do you think that there's any ways in which uh, your project, uh, any ways in which you think that your project could have been inspiring for Wikipedia or something like that, or things that it could have learned from you? It says, no, not really. Um, uh, uh, the, um, 
that said, the, the Wikipedia's founders really focused on content. Um, and and uh, the people that I've interviewed, I ask every interviewee to talk about all of the other projects, because most of them know it, um, and to talk about Wikipedia. It's interesting. These people have, as you imagine, um, I mean, this isn't in the talk, but uh, or not up here, but, but you'll ask people, like, these people have, have all spent a lot of time thinking about why their project didn't take off and why Wikipedia did. Um, um, and I ask everyone, like, so how do you feel like having seen Wiki, having basically created something like Wikipedia before? And they're like, "What do you mean? Am I, am I bitter?" It's like, "No, no, no." no. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I got over that. And, and most, of, and I would say that that um, the the that 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 the common thing is, is that everyone said, "Yeah, for a while, you know, I was a little annoyed, but I, I've sort of come to terms with it." What's interesting is that many of the contributors, many of the founders here, are actually now became major contributors to Wikipedia. Uh, quite a few of them. Um, and uh, most of the other ones have certainly looked at it, but I can tell you all of them have thought deeply about why it is that their project uh, didn't work. So it's really great people to be asking here because they've been basically doing my research project for the last 10 years um, uh, individually. So anyway, um, uh, uh, they all saw Wikipedia's founder's role soliciting content rather than building infrastructure, which I think is, is, is the, the archival data supports. Um, so again, um, one of the founders explained, I think the smart thing that Larry Sanger, one of the co-founders of Wikipedia did, and that I would probably try to do if I did the project again today, would be to solicit academic experts and other experts and try to get people to write and see the uh, seed articles. Uh, founder of Everything 2 cited the role of uh, uh, Jimmy Wales, Wikipedia Jimmy Wales as an evangelist and the reason for Wikipedia's success. Says, and that's part of what probably held ETE ba uh, E2 back, Everything 2, um, to some extent, was that we didn't have a strong evangelist out front. Now, uh, yeah. But I mean, neither of these were as constrained as Wikipedia in terms of content, right? Like, everything to you had other things. Uh, so that's right. If it didn't evangelist, like, it wouldn't be encyclopedia evangelist. And I remember uh, being put at had, like, sort of, like, how-to tutorials and, like... Yeah. Wikipedia yeah. also has how-to tutorials. Um, uh, uh, whether or not you need to... What? But it also has Jimmy Wells. But it also has Jimmy Wells. That's right. Okay. So um, that, that said, that said, both of these projects had enormous press um, um, uh, in the sense that both of these articles were, they were two of the three featured articles in the USA Today article. They, um, um, every, every project in my, in, my, in my sample, with the exception of Interpedia, um, uh, had write-ups in major national newspapers, at least, um, and were cited in a variety of places. The founders of Everything 2 also founded Slashdot and advertised the project very heavily from Slash at the time. Um, so uh, none of these projects were, I think, hurting for, um, and, uh, were hurting for exposure. Um, these projects, um, certainly. Uh, it, do you think it's possible that if they had, I mean, like, right, like if uh, had people who were writing lots of articles but they weren't sort of academically neutral? Do you think that would have been? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Megan, do you have anything uh, more to help me scaffold partial success? Because everything to, how do you go from one to 50,000? So, and then maybe there's something more about something that's a community as opposed to producing an object right. or a platform. But how do you go from one to 50,000? So I haven't thousand? framed this in terms of a stage model, although I have one in the at, at the end of my slides. Well, let, let's come to that at the end. If I don't, if you don't think that I've answered that uh, 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 well enough, which I think is possible. Yeah. Let's come back and talk about that yeah, at the end. Because my other question, which is not your responsibility to answer, is how does this relate to other things like YouTube versus, because it's not all open source, like it, it, it opens the frame too wide, but that's, I'm asking how we can translate some of what you're saying. Uh, so I'd like to uh, imagine that these results are extremely general. Uh, uh, everyone, everyone should use it and cite my paper when they do. Uh, uh, um, uh, let, 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 let's, let's talk about that at the end. Hopefully, I'll, I'll get through. I have two more hypotheses to get through. So, um, so the third is lower, lower transaction cost. This is the one that is certainly most supported by the literature, and I basically found support for this um, as well. Um, so the idea is that Wikipedia attracted um, contributors because it lowered the the costs around transactions. So we can think about, and the failed models had higher costs. So if we think about this in terms of like, think of this in terms of you can contribute to uh, if you see a mistake in Britannica, you can contribute the answer, but you have to go and find the address of Britannica. You have to get a type up a, 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 a little letter or write it on the back of a postcard. You need to find a stamp. You need to mail it. 
Um, I'm annoyed. Um, I, last week, I think for the first time, I fixed. I mean, I edit Wikipedia all the time, and I saw a missing comma and added it. My my, my like my, my example is always like adding the missing comma, but I don't think I'd ever done it. And I <laughs> added it, and I was like, I'm actually adding a missing comma. Um, um, but but uh, uh, there are these people who see the missing comma and things, and then will will want to. So 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 I was annoyed by that missing comma. But was I so annoyed that I would have written it on a piece of paper and found a stamp and mailed it? No, I was not that annoyed. I was a little bit annoyed. I was I was one edit button annoyed. And in the sense that the, the, the costs of that uh, uh, collaboration now, or participating in that, or contributing have gone down, um, I became, in that particular moment, more likely to do it. Yeah? Well, the, there's another part that maybe you get into later, but it's not part of what your statement. OK, if I find a mistake in Britannica and I write a letter, it might be several years before that, before I see the result of, of doing I'm that. I'm not going to get into that, but that's. that's uh, where, where is with Wikipedia? Well, I fix it. It's there five seconds later. So, 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 so right. Now, 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 now that, the reason that, that this is a little bit of a bad example because, of course, I'm comparing this. I'm, I'm, I'm not comparing this to Britannica. I'm, right. I'm comparing Wikipedia to all these other projects. And my suggestion is, is that Wikipedia made the cost of contributing lower the, um, the, than almost all these other I'm projects. I'm also curious, though, what, in these other projects, did they have to go? Did, if I made a change, did it have to go through a curation or moderation process? Uh, there was variation in that. Um, and that, that, that's a type of transaction cost, too, although it's not my efforts. That, that, you know, how long does it take for, for me to actually get a result from what I did? So, so there are two ways of sort of understanding conceptually what's going on in that example of having to go through a curation. Um, I, I, I'll put that in two pieces. One is in terms of uh, um, uh, cost, but I want to make this more like the mechanical cost. And the second thing is more of the social cost of having to sort of go through that. Now, that, that's the, that, that I will talk okay. about. OK. So the frequently cited costs in interviews uh, have been things like account creation, logging in, learning a markup, as opposed to just having like a more like, you know, open office-like uh, um, interface. Um, right, and there's been some suggestion by Yochai and others that, that these lower costs create opportunities for peer production like Wikipedia. Um, Wikipedia definitely did offer lower costs associated with contributing compared to some of the projects. For example, one of the founders of HGG said, I think it's the immediacy of it, and uh, certainly one that gets to your point. Um, the aspects of the fact that you don't have to sign up or to edit. You can look at a page and see something wrong and immediately edit without having to do anything else, you know. You can come along and do a drive-by edit and never be involved again and make a contribution. You can't do a drive-by edit uh, on almost any other project. So that's sort of support for this basic idea. Um, uh, again, uh, uh, the distributed encyclopedia project founder said the distributed encyclopedia failed because building an encyclopedia using handcrafted HTML, so having to write the, the code, although it's still mostly like text, um, is still too complex. Right? Wiki solved that latter issue nicely. I went on to become a major contributor to Wikipedia as well. <laughs> Two ums. Too, Too complex. complex, right? Yeah. Where's the button? Where's the button? <laughs> <laughs> right. But costs alone seem limited in explaining the failures of the projects. Although this is what I walked in is what I thought would be sort of like the dominant explanation. Only one founder suggested that the lower contributions were the most important reason for success, and I asked people to sort of rank these things as well. Um, several projects argued that their project was effectively as easy to contribute to as Wikipedia. Um, for example, um, uh, one of the founders said, one problem was a mandatory preview step before you saved it, which probably wasn't enough to kill the, single site, uh, to, to kill the site single handedly, but I probably would have changed it uh, if given the opportunity to do the project again. Wikipedia does fine without that. Um, so this idea that although this was important um, or played an important role, it, uh, most people didn't think it was the most important thing. They thought that some of the other hypotheses that I've already suggested were. Now, the, the fourth proposition is that Wikipedia succeeded because it sort of hid authorship from, from editors. Um, uh, uh, and the idea is that, it, that, that, that um, it had low attribution, much lower attribution of work than any of the other projects. And my suggestion is, is that this low attribution facilitated less sort of social ownership over the work products and socially risky collaboration. So most projects, um, uh, most of the failed projects used stronger attribution and had uh, more, territory, more territoriality over the text. So that would be more like this reviewing stage where you have explicit authors. Um, um, several projects allowed uh, uh, no direct collaboration on text, as in, in the sense that if you wanted to improve someone's uh, work, you needed to like copy and paste their work. Um, and you were allowed to do that. Um, uh, all this work was uh, uh, freely available. But you could take it and put it somewhere else and then uh, work on it there separately. Some other projects um, uh, did this thing, which is kind of interesting, which is that they would, they would um, they would allow anyone to edit the project, but there would be an author. The first person to create it would just be like listed as the author, so they'd have their name on it. So even though it was like Wikipedia in the sense that anyone could press the edit button, um, uh, there was this there was a sense in which there was a I mean, try to find like who wrote something on Wikipedia. It's actually like pretty tricky. You can go to the history page and you have to set a count. Okay, there's these things. I mean, there's a few people whose work, I guess, uh, academic work has been built on answering these sorts of questions. But uh, 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 it's it's 
it's a uh, uh, it's a it's a it, it's certainly true that attribution was was largely hidden. Um, also compared to new PDF, uh, Ashish. Can you make a as to which ones uh, allow no direct collaboration? Uh, I have uh, I've got a list of all of these projects coded up with all these hypotheses, so I'll I'll show that in like two slides. So yeah. I'm gonna go out of the way and assume that anonymous uh, sort of contributions are more prevalent now than. Um, how prevalent were anonymous they? contributions are more common than like 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 um, projects that don't ascribe um, ownership to contributions and to creative things. Maybe yeah. So so the um, idea is that anonymous. How prevalent was it back uh, during these projects? Three of these projects allowed anonymous contributions uh, of various types. Uh, most of them. It depends what you mean by anonymous. Some of them required that you create accounts. But, had, but almost none of them required that that account be connected to your identity in any way. Um, so you need to have some persistent identity, but that identity didn't have to be connected to your real identity in any of these cases, I guess I except mean, for new PDF. I mean, like, but also like, a, like an open source, like how typical was it? Anonymous contributions? Very yeah. unlikely. Okay. Um, um, so again, this is the, you can think of this as sort of, like a lot of the literature, and actually a lot of my own research has focused on the role of sort of reputation and status. Um, connected to sort of uh, um, connected with con contributing, and that sort of seems to go against that. Um, uh, uh, there's some great work by um, Eric Nipple um, and M. Um, Pouchard who've suggested, who used the example of French chefs, chefs to suggest that attribution norms can act as a form of IT, I, I, uh, intellectual property, like copyright, in terms of protecting ideas. And the suggestion, is, and, but, but I think that there's an interesting suggestion that maybe they impose sort of similar types of costs. And uh, I think that you can sort of think of these as sort of the flip side of reputation-based systems, and that reputation may come with a cost, and we can think of that. Um, failed projects uh, created, uh, th their attribution systems created barriers to collaboration. So someone from Everything 2 said, in Wikipedia, when you submit content, you don't really get authorship credit directly, you know. You appear in the history, but these aren't necessarily your words. Um, they're just sort of your contribution to Wikipedia. But with everything, the writings were still theirs. They had control of them on the site. And they received kind of direct attribution. I think there was some weakness there in that when people wrote something, and if it was factual content, if they had information that was incorrect, there was no real, I mean, occasion that it would go and change it, or the content. But otherwise, it was sort of up to them to receive communication and re-add to it. What well, interesting, all of the photographs on Wikipedia have photographer credits. Yes. Different from the text side. Uh, that's right. Um, well, so that's sort you can of edit graphics, right? I mean, many, many, many graphics on Wikipedia. We have different edits, hundreds of them. So if you look at if you look at diagrams, you'll see that very often there are enormous amounts of collaboration on diagrams, even in Wikipedia. Um, and even if you look at most images, it's very unusual to go to an image and actually see that it hasn't been changed at all. Usually, it's been edited and cropped, uh, at least maybe adjusted in certain ways to make the article a little better. So I think that I think that that it's true that certain types of creative works may lend themselves to uh, 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 for technical reasons, we lend themselves um, to to different levels of cooperation. But I think that I think uh, the images is more for legal reasons than technical reasons. I'll defer to you on that. Uh, but uh, but it, but it's a really interesting point. Um, uh, yeah, I think that you uh, this this discussion suggests to me that you're combining attribution and control. Uh -huh. and so this quote here is about control over the work. Uh huh. Um, Whereas, in fact, uh, these images we've talked about, anyone can be the most recent uploader of an image, and it's still that image. So I am trying to do something a little more subtle, which is that I'm trying to describe attribution as a form of social control. Um, uh, uh, so I agree with what you're saying. Uh, I'll, I've written that down. We'll, maybe we can talk about that later. Um, another founder suggested that people would contribute from uh, Interpedia suggested that people would contribute articles that would be missing or they'd be somewhere down the list below the default article, but they'd be the work of one identifiable person, unlike Wikipedia, where it'd be very difficult to track down who contributed some messages. Um, and then many of the people suggested that, in fact, Wikipedia <laughs> succeeded because uh, of the low textual ownership facilitating more collaboration. So, for example, a different founder of Everything 2 suggested that I think that having one article as opposed to several write-ups on a node took advantage of marginal contributions in a way that Everything 2 is not set up to do. That really helped make it much more strong, uh, strongly many hands make lighter work type of exercise. Um, uh, another a different developer from Wikipedia suggested that Wikipedia sort of conquered because anyone could just write anything on the page without anyone's approval. 
uh, and then another one uh, uh, from everything she was saying. I think that having one article as opposed to several write-ups on a node took advantage of marginal. Oh no, that's the same one. Okay. In any case, um, uh, so anyway, um, those are my four sort of hypotheses. I want to try to bring this together a little bit. So these are the 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 four sort of propositions. Um, uh, we don't need to go through them again that emerged from the coding. And I wanted to go back and sort of put them together in a way that we can think about them. So so here's a two by two. Sociologists love this. Uh, um, uh, and what I've done here is talked about uh, uh, sort of innovate, like we can think about sort of like the innovation in terms of process and product. So so my so, I, so you can think about the first one, this idea of familiar, the familiarity con concept, right? Is, is, is the projects which have uh, uh, um, used uh, uh, the ones that, that we're building like an old, we're building an encyclopedia. If you know what Britannica is, you know what we're building. And you can see that there's basically four of these projects which really said we're building just an encyclopedia. And then the info was a little bit somewhere in between and HGG was somewhere in between and they said it's basic encyclopedia but it's going to be different in some way. And then Intrapedia and everything too had much, much broader visions of what uh, a reference work online would look like. Um, um, and, and then along, and so, so that's the access from like sort of established products to sort of very innovative products or goals. Now, in terms of my third and fourth hypotheses, this, uh, we can, uh, this idea of the, the sort of lower transaction cost and this idea of sort of textual ownership, we can think of these as actually really describing a different way of building an encyclopedia. Um, um, and that you see, and some of these people are saying, let's, we're going to build it in a really different way. We're going to get rid of, we're going to get rid of authors. We're going to, we're going to do it in like this sort of more radically different way. And some of them said, we're going to, we're going to build it basically the way that Britannica has done. So down in this corner, we have these three projects which were basically building something like Britannica, some basically like Britannica, except they weren't paying people to do it. Um, uh, and, 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 and these three are the ones that I think failed the hardest um, uh, uh, in the sense that they're the ones that really like, we're doing Britannica, but they, 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 they never got uh, moving in some, of the, in some of the way that the other ones did. Um, uh, the other two that were, that were more difficult were these ones so this is, they we're building the established, we're building the established product in, in, in the established way. Similarly, the ones that were like um, uh, innovative product, but we're going to do it in an innovative, we're going to build this new thing and build it in a really different way. These are the other ones that really struggled to, to, to take off. The, 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 the ones that, that were changing everything. Now, the ones that mobilized people, that had, you know, thousands of contributors, all of these things sort of, they kept one thing. They basically did it. In, they, they, they did some stuff a little bit different, but they kept they kept stuff constant, right? So we can think of it as having like if co if collective action becomes more difficult when you have all the balls up in the air. If 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 your goal is to give people something that they can sort of understand, either 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 a process that they can understand or a product that they can understand, those are the ones that got a little bit of traction, right? Um, so the ones along the diagonal, and the only project um, that had an established product, um, uh, uh, but did it in uh, in in. But, but did it in a, in, in, in a new way was Wikipedia. And in the long term, I think that it's, it's interesting to think about what, what the effect has been because Wikipedia now deletes more, of, if a new article is created, more of them are deleted than are kept. In part because Wikipedia has, because, because you know, most of the things, uh, articles that people want to create seem to fall outside of what people's sort of conception of an encyclopedia has been. So that thing which uh, at least the people uh, uh, I've interviewed um, are, have suggested was critically important um, for, for Wikipedia's success in mobilizing contributors in the long term um, helped create, um, you know, placed barriers in terms of Wikipedia's continued growth. Um, yeah? So I apologize you're going to get to this, but I think the divinity of what Larry said, mm -hmm. sort of new product, is a really interesting epilogue because he created this in 2006, but he kind of went back to this. We need a very yeah. credentialed peer produce or, 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 or peer review sort of model rather than kind of open source. So I wonder if you could just place Citizendium here on this chart. I, I, I would put, I guess I would place Citizendium, uh, I would place Citizendium right here. Okay. Like, like sort of on that line right there. Um, I, in the sense that they've, they're, they're keeping, they're keeping more of the traditional process right. than, uh, they're keeping more of the traditional process than, say, uh, uh, Wikipedia, but they're, uh, uh, but they're, Diverging from traditional encyclopedia, the way people write encyclopedias, more than say Newpedia did. Well, so then that speaks to one of the quotes that was on a previous slide by one of these founders said that if we had a stronger sort of a peer review credential sort of system, maybe it would have worked out better. But the this, the, the uh, experience of Newpedia and Citizendium seems pretty, to suggest otherwise. So I'm just wondering how Citizendium sort of fits into your narrative or uh, how, how you consider that. So I'm very hesitant. I think that I think that in a world with Wikipedia, I think that it's. That, that it's hard to compare 
creating an encyclopedia of projects in a world without Wikipedia to creating a new encyclopedia in a project with one. Because there's competition, there, there's competition for, for resources in a way that changes things in ways that I'm very interested in, but which, I'm, which I think complicate my story in ways that makes me hesitant to draw conclusions. So I think it's super interesting, and I, maybe we can talk about it, but I'd be a little, uh, at this point, a little hesitant to speculate. Uh, so um, that's, uh, um, I'll, so I'll say one thing about future work and then open it up for questions. So um, basically, my, my, next step is, my next step is to, I'm doing some more interviews, but then the real thing is that I'm actually testing these, hypo I, I built a data set of basically now 10,000 um, attempts at wikis. And the idea is that I'm going to code them up in terms of these hypotheses and some other, from, other things from the literature, and then actually s try to do a quantitative test to see if, in fact, uh, uh, you know, how these things sort of wa um, wa wash out. So the idea is to go back to the work that I'm a little more comfortable with, uh, uh, some of this uh, quantitative work, and, and, and test it there. Um, of course, the large majority of wik wikis have failed. Um, I've also got data from a different online community, um, the Scratch community, uh, created by uh, uh, the, uh, the Lifelong Kindergarten group, Mitch Resnick's group at the, um, at the at the Media Lab, and um, Andres Munro Hernandez is a graduate student there who helped build the community. And he and I have collaborated on a few papers together, and we're interested in um, uh, testing some of this work there. So, um, uh, really wonderful, really wonderful data there as well. So, hopefully, uh, the idea is to understand uh, how specific these, um, um, if these apply to other wikis, and how specific they are to uh, to wikis per se, and, and maybe not the broader world of peer production uh, processes projects. So. Thanks um, uh, to uh, a lot of people, including a lot of people I haven't put up here. Susan Silby is uh, uh, the qualitative methods, uh, 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 qualitative methods professor at, um, uh, and sociologist at MIT who's helped me a lot with this. And then, of course, a number of other people have as well. So thank you um, so much. I appreciate it. And let's, I'd... Let's... Um, oh, wait. I, I actually, I removed that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. No. Uh, I removed my table with all the list of the, I told you it was coming, but I must have, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, uh, I can pull it up in an old version of the slides. But yeah, uh, questions? Great, great talk, Miko, thanks. Um, one of the things that I thought might have been on this list have, would be the modularity and granularity, as, as you kind of mentioned. But I do understand that these are very similar projects, so it's hard to, you probably wouldn't see any variation in those. I, I'm also curious in that these kinds of things are also going to be correlated with the inability to attribute things to people. If, if 100 people have written an article together, how are you going to put a name on it? And it might be interesting to look for examples where the two of those things are not so highly correlated to see if we could figure out where attribution and modularity, where, how those contribute or not to the did you take modularity? Did you think about adding that? And uh, so, or? so a couple people. I mean, I, I can go back and look at the code. I have a code for modularity in my data set. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so um, uh, it was it was mentioned, but it didn't come through as a major thing that lots of people said. It in part, I think, for the reason you've suggested, which is that um, actually all of these projects were at least as modular as Wikipedia, and some of them were more. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Andrea. Yeah. So I actually had it was a very good talk. First time I managed to see this, it was very interesting. Um, I had a more of a comment when you had the two by two up. Yeah. It actually made me think there's a book by Anna Huff that talks about doing research. Uh -huh. And it talks about joining conversations. Huff? Huff, yeah. Oh, I can yeah. send you the reference. And it talks about joining conversations and it talks about how you can't really innovate both in like method and in research question because you don't really have anyone to talk to. Right. And the fact that you have, you know, innovation in one of like the right. diagonal essentially happening and not the established process, established product, or innovative, innovative, working out, right. kind of resonated with that. Great. No, that's so a, that, that that I'd love to see that reference. Into, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Would tie into the idea. Of like so yeah, I mean, in terms of the in terms of the way that the paper is being framed, it's much, it's more of this like it's more in terms of a, a literature on mobilization and like 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 drawing. Uh, so th there's a there's a big literature in sociology on social movements, and they have a similar problem to the literature on uh, peer production, which is that it's hard to see all the people who tried to create a social movement and didn't, no one came to their protest, right? Like, because it was just a guy on the street. Um, uh, uh, and so uh, I'm hoping to sort of uh, leverage these data to help uh, speak to that and the broader sort of research project to speak to that, to that literature. Um, ben, is there already some research on the peer side of what the people who 
were potentially attributing what they say about this that already exists somewhere? Um, so I've interviewed a few people. It's not in this uh, presentation, but I have interviewed a few people who were contributors to different um, uh, interview people who were contributors to different projects who weren't. Um, early Wikipedia contributors, but also contributors to some of these other to some of the other projects. In part because I was interested in their perspective on on things. So um, uh, I'm not interested in making that the focus of this research, right. but uh, uh, I, I use that as one of the ways in which I try to understand uh, understand these these data. Um, yeah, I'll be sure. Uh, so I was trying to reconcile a point two and three, which is most people say Wikipedia is technologically unsophisticated. Yes. But they also say that it has low transaction costs, right? Yes. And so, how 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 many of these other things? You talked about all of them being hmm. media, but how many of them are wikis? Is it the only wiki? I mean, what's so 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 in the sense that in the none of them were called wikis, but what's a wiki? I mean, um um. Media editing. And press an edit button. See like some kind of like non HTML markup. Yes, there were other projects like that. Um uh, uh the info was like that. Um uh. I mean, there's a sense in which Wikipedia today isn't, doesn't really look like wiki. I mean, wiki at the time meant f uh, things like you, every article had to start with a capital letter and have at least one other capital letter which was not adjacent to it, right? That's what wiki meant at the time. Now, now um, Wikipedia has since re removed that restriction. Um, some of the other projects were more, didn't never started out with that, but still had the big the, the, the big text box. So in some ways, they're more like, in the sense that Wikipedia is a wiki now, they're more like a wiki than Wikipedia was, um, in certain ways. Uh, but uh, uh, there's variation in that, so which I hope shows up. Transaction costs come from something else. That's right. Things the, the transaction costs that people cited most often were account creation, um, uh, like they need to log in, yeah. um, uh, um, mechanical costs like confirming an email address, that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, yes. So it's, yeah. Sure. I think there's a couple of um, places. I think probably for time you didn't bring up some of the nuances, but I think the there's an interesting part within the low attribution that there's a big difference between low attribution and anonymity. Yes. And that you know I think especially with Wikipedia because it does allow anonymous contributions, but you can track the difference in how much contribution comes from those who choose to log in and be identified on the site so that versus the ones who do contribute anonymously. So I think you get to see some, it's a nice way to be able to see what is the benefit of this subtle attribution, that right. it might not be huge and outstanding, but it has a really big effect. I mean, there's also, an, there's also an irony in the case of Wikipedia, which is that by logging in with a pseudonym, you're actually, mu your identity is much more hidden than by not logging in. Because of course, if you don't log in, your IP address, uh, like your internet address is like, like plastered right. on every so end you do, and people can find out exactly who's identity on, on there is more subtle than that's that right. low attribution, and that within the community, that's, that's there's, right. There's two audiences, so it's low attribution for the general public of readership. So I think part of it is that there's two levels of audience people write for, part of which is the general public, and part of which is the community of other users, and especially anyone who contributes on a talk page is dealing with that community of right. other users as their right. audience. Yes. Um, and then, um, well, that's one else. I'll just talk about the other point. I don't know, someone who hasn't asked a question? Uh, yeah. I'm just curious, I, maybe you mentioned this and I, I missed it, but were all of these nonprofit uh, projects or were they some for profit ventures? Um, I'm curious if the financial model of them they all failed to make profit. What? They all failed to make profits. That's oh, right. Of course. That's right. They all failed to make profits. Uh, um, uh, uh, all of the projects were, Newpedia was a little unclear. They sort of thought they might want to, uh, uh, everything too was started by a company, but they certainly failed to make a profit. HG2 was also started by a company and then was transferred to the BBC. Um, uh, uh, so, I mean, I guess, uh, yeah, uh, state uh, nonprofit. Um, uh, Interpedia was nonprofit. The info was nonprofit. Yeah. Okay. GNE was nonprofit, and TDEP was nonprofit. So there's variation in that. Yeah. So a couple of things. First of all, on uh, modularity, uh -huh. uh, at least some of the statements you quoted on low transaction cost uh, would refer to modularity as opposed to the account setup. So when you tell the story about fixing the comma. Right. That's exactly modularity in terms of um, uh, the fact that you can, 
the, the, the discrete unit of contribution is low enough that you need very low activation I see. Uh, in order to do it. So in that regard... Well, they're, they're connected, yeah. Uh, in, in that regard, when you say I coded up and the others were more modular, the question is what's the minimal level of contribution necessary to move the ball right. forward? Uh, and at least the comma story is consistent with modularity. The second was the question of, of generalizability. Mm -hmm. And particularly, I think your uh, hypothesis four uh -huh. is the one that is most discrete to encyclopedia-like things. Uh -huh. But if you were to take something, so two things. First of all, you said you talk about why you think everything true is a failure. Mm -hmm. But I think relative to any crazy success like Wikipedia, everything is a failure. Does it stop? Does it not continue? 50,000 participants, 100,000 articles I think you had up there. Yeah. What does it mean to be a failure? And then how you compare that to things like Slashdot or Daily Cost, which are broadly within the same family of peer production, clearly don't have uh, 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 the same non-attribution right. characteristics. And, and so I'd say that of, of these, how many of them are directly about what makes for an encyclopedia? Right versus a successful peer production process? Uh, so that's a, those are great, a great and difficult questions. Um, so uh, in terms of what makes these a failure, I mean, like, one answer I can say is that every single person in, that, I, that I've talked to considers their project a failure. Um, uh, uh, the, everything to, the Everything 2 team um, more maybe than anyone else because they were the, the ones that have the most reason to feel like they uh, could have become <laughs> Wikipedia. Um, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're over it now, but, uh, uh, um, uh, so I mean, that's, that, 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 that's one Although answer. interestingly, they're more replaced by the blogosphere than by Wikipedia. And certainly, when I was looking at it in 2001, mm -hmm. it was clear that what Wikipedia was doing was completely different. In the sense that everything too, people wrote about whatever they wanted. Everything too was everything too was had, had different parts. I mean, everything too had a huge number of people who were producing encyclopedic content. They were just writing encyclopedia articles about things. There was a sub community in everything too, um, uh, largely put, they hired an editor um, who really pushed creative writing in a in a subset. Those two groups were probably that, that was the smaller group until we keep until somewhere in late 2001 when basically and you can you can you can see this the people who were writing encyclopedic content on everything too left to go to wikipedia um and the the the, the everything too founders will tell will tell about this they can point to people that have done it they introduce them to people who moved um, um there was a sense in which everything too really identified its like marginal utility in a world with wikipedia um uh so so um i, I believe that everything too is trying to do something that was much bigger and broader than just being an encyclopedia very explicitly but they were also, and many participants in everything too, were definitely trying to build an encyclopedia. Can I ask a quick follow-up to that? Did they take the content with them from everything too? Uh, that's a great question. I, I assume people, some people must have, but I don't, I don't know the answer. That's a great question. Um, and then, yes. Uh, I very much like your uh, hypothesis, especially the final one. But the research question that you have, when I compare Wiktionary, which is a comparatively failure project as compared to, to Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that the main factor is the the annoyance that you just mentioned. When you see a missing comma, you feel annoyed, right? So you want to act. And there's even more conflict uh, deriving from the data in, in Wikipedia. So you see that somebody is basically wrong, so you have to act immediately. And there is no conflict on Wiktionary. So I'm, I'm wondering to what extent this conflict and also conflict resolution solutions present on Wikipedia, like discussion pages and other forms of you know, dispute resolution, would be actually distinguishing. Um, so there was spaces for that kind of social interaction in um, in different ways in uh, in the info. Uh, in Intrapedia, in everything to, in HGG2. HGG2 had a very sophisticated system for, for that. Uh, the info, for example, is just comments. Um, uh, Newpedia, there were offline channels, but it wasn't the same place, but there was definitely space for that. Uh, GE was, and uh, maybe maybe TDP didn't have that. Um, then one failure of Wiktionary. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, not going to speculate exactly as to why Wiktionary failed, although I'm interested in that topic. I think we're now over time and being pushed to, so we can maybe talk afterwards. Yeah. Sorry. I just want to make one very quick comment, which comes back to the sort of overall significance of the work, because I was thinking, like, if you put their Facebook or you put their YouTube, could one do a similar study of saying, was it because the product of Facebook is really friendship, and they kept that very much at the core, making the process innovative. And in the same case, in the same way, YouTube does something which is the product. We you know we all produce videos, and we like to watch other people's videos, but the innovative process was there. So, you know, it's like a genre of know. studying. I don't even use Facebook, so I'm not going to speculate as to oh. what the product of Facebook is. Uh, I have a conception, but I'm probably off. So. Everyone here knows more about that than I do, I think. So cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. I appreciate that. And my email is on every slide, and I encourage everyone to uh, uh, tell me. Uh, I I'd love to continue this conversation. I'm writing this up.